In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good and master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Amen. As I mentioned, I'm going to continue in the first section of this presentation with what I had in the first section of the last one, namely a consideration of Sabbath. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently and, con and prolong it into a beginning discussion of faith and culture. One thing you might notice about Shabbat, about the Lord's Day, it's useless. It doesn't get anything done. It's not like a work day. In fact, the Jews' observance of Shabbat once every seven days, and they insisted on that even in the army. If they had it, there was a whole battalion of, of Jewish soldiers, and they ate kosher and they uh, uh, kept the Shabbat, kept the Sabbath. It amazed these people that you'd stop one day like that when you could be making money, when you could be doing the same thing that's going on right now. You know, people who don't use their shops or don't go to work or don't and spend the time with the Lord and with the family. It, it's, un, it's unthinkable. You could be making money today. But this, so the Sabbath is useless. But you know, Nearly every precious thing is useless. Friendship. You try to use a friend, it's no longer friendship. It's useless. Prayer. You might pray to get stuff from God, that's fine. But prayer, you could do a lot more with that time. Uh, it's useless. You know, uh, give you an example. A volleyball game. That's relaxation. It's certainly not the most efficient way to get a ball back and forth across a net. There's something precious there that's useless. Even gold. What can you do with gold? You can't make cars out of it. You can't make guns out of it. You can use it in a few electrical connections. But most of all, Gold is for beauty, not for utility. So is Sabbath. So is the Lord's Day. It's not a useful day. And in asserting that, we assert something about transcendence. Our life is not measured by the years we have on this globe or by what we do or by where we go. It's measured by our relationship to God which, why, in one way, it's very, very helpful. It secures us eternal life. It's not useful. You don't make any money out of it. Even I, preaching the gospel, I'm not making any money out of this. And so, um, Sabbath is like that. This is why it's so hard for our people to grasp. Because there should be something happening. Now, I mentioned last time, you know, the Sabbath is um, mentioned right in the first book. And uh, it characterizes the covenant. It's the fourth commandment, third commandment. Um, and, of course, there's our uh, observance of the Lord's Day, which is the same principle, moved over a day to sum up all God's gift through and to Israel and to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Now, we keep it holy by remembering. Remember, in, in the Hebrew Bible, is a precious word. To remember biblically means to have what God has done so real to us that we're different. That's why when the Lord says, you forgot, he doesn't mean it slipped your mind. 
it means what I've done for you is not changing you. And there's something wrong with that. So to remember is to, to, to open our hearts to ponder and receive God's action. That's what it means to remember. So, the, uh, the day of the Lord is also the day of the church uh, because it's the day when the presence of the risen Lord is particularly celebrated. Huh? Uh, now, it's also a day of solidarity. That is, uh, and this is from Dies Domini, uh, John Paul II's uh, apostolic letter. The Sunday Eucharist, therefore, does not, not only does not absolve the faithful from the duties of charity, but on the contrary commits them even more to all the works of charity, of mercy, of apostolic outreach, by which means of which it is seen that the faithful are not of this world and yet are the light of the world, giving glory to the presence of men. The whole second part of that is a quote uh, from uh, Sancro Sanctum Concilium. In other words, keeping the Sabbath is an essential part of preaching the gospel. Uh, now, I want to move on to uh, this, what this means in regard to faith and culture. Okay? Uh, The Dei Verbum, you see, uh, speaks about the obedience of faith from Romans. It is to be given to God who reveals an obedience by which man commits his whole self freely to God, offering the full submission of intellect and will uh, to faith, to the God who reveals. And so, uh, faith, loose definition, is an act by which a person freely responds to the revealing act of God, in which God communicates and manifests himself in the knowledge of his plan of salvation. Aquinas has an interesting text. Uh, I'm going to read the last line of it. It is clear then that faith comes from God. Faith comes from God. Habitual notions of faith come from us and from the culture but they don't change us. Faith comes from God in two ways. This is Aquinas. By way of an interior light that leads to assent and by way of the realities that are proposed from without and that had as their source divine revelation. Now, I want to talk about culture. The second term, faith and culture, is culture. Uh, now I'm going to be reading, this is Gaudium et Spes. Man comes to a true and full humanity only through culture. That is, through the cultivation of the goods and values of nature. Wherever human life is involved, therefore, nature and culture are quite intimate, intimately connected one with another. The very word culture is the same as cultivate. The gift of the soil we cultivate. The gift of our lives, our talents, our bodies, our minds, we cultivate. That's culture. Uh, this is another text now. Uh, the word culture in its general sense includes everything whereby man develops and perfects his many bodily and spiritual qualities. He strives by his knowledge and his labor to bring the world itself under his control. He renders social life more human, both in the family and in the civic community through the improvement of customs and institutions. I'll return to that. Attending Mass every Sunday builds the whole community. Throughout the course of time, he expresses, communicates, and conserves in his works great spiritual experiences and desires that they might be advantage of advantage to the progress of many, even of the whole human family. Now, what has that got to do with faith? This, one more quote, if you don't mind. This one is from 
John Paul II's letter founding the culture, the uh, Council for Culture. It's very powerful. A faith which does not become culture is a faith which has not been fully received, not thoroughly thought through, not fully lived out. In other words, the dynamics of faith automatically produces a way of life. Now, we can see that, you know, in our own day. The homeschoolers create a culture. Now, they annoy some people, but they are creating a family, creating an education, creating a view of life, and their children show it. And most universities, and not only Catholic universities, like to have homeschooled people uh, come to their schools because they're balanced humanly. Uh, there are other ways, of course, but the point is that faith, which does not become culture, you see, uh, is a faith which has not been fully received, not thoroughly thought through, not fully lived out. And that, as you know, well know, is the situation of the Catholic Church right now in the United States. American culture so dominates Catholic life that we don't have a culture of our own. This culture is not a ghetto, it's a contribution. The more we live this culture, the more we can enliven, strengthen, and help the whole of society. Now, an essential part of building that culture is precisely Shabbat, or the day of the Lord. Every Sunday, drop everything. Join the brethren in praising God, listening to the Word, praying to Him, and receiving the body and blood of the Lord after we have joined ourselves to His act of love on the cross. So you see, this. Uh, I just want to conclude with this statement of Vatican II. Therefore, it is in the name of the Christian faith that the Second Vatican Council committed the whole church to listen to modern man in order to understand him and to invent a new kind of dialogue which would permit the originality of the gospel message to be carried to the heart of contemporary mentalities. We must then rediscover the apostolic creativity and the prophetic power of the first disciples in order to face new cultures. There's no denying that the culture is new. There's no denying that some things that were powerful in the past don't make sense anymore because of the culture. But what have we done created in a creative way to address this new culture, to speak to it about the dignity of human beings, the joy of, of relaxation, the importance of turning your life to God? What have we done? Nothing. In fact, and I'll oh, I'll end with this. Uh, I don't have time really, but I'll end with the last part of it. John Paul II questions us and said, "Listen, if you are so much grown up as a Catholic Church in the United States, how come you have made no impact at all on your culture?" 